Have you ever needed more playbacks on your lighting console? Well, if you're a lighting designer or video jockey, the answer is probably yes. My name is Caleb Hornschmeyer, and today I'm going to show you how to take a MIDI controller like that nano control or another MIDI controller and connect it to a bone box or bone for use on PC to be used in your show file, no matter what MIDI device it is. So start by creating a preset specifically for your faders and knobs. And then we do have to patch our MIDI device in BOM. So take the MIDI device you're using, connect it to BOM MIDI virtual translator out, and then connect the opposite end to your MIDI device and give it a little push to make sure you have MIDI connection. Um, go ahead and on the first translator, turn on Capture MIDI, and you can do that for the outgoing as well, even though it will be changed to a note. And set your, uh, make sure it's set to PP for value, and then you do have to make sure that Swallow is turned on. Hit Control D seven times to multiply that down to your eight fader translators and then set your control change numbers and if you're going to be using this heavily have a lot of faders flying at the same time you might want to set them all to different variable numbers because computing in the bone box is a little bit slower than computing on a computer um, I'm going to give it a quick save because it's been shutting down but basically what I just showed you is how I don't want you to program in Boom, because you have to change every single number for every single translator every single time. Um, the way I've been doing it, where you preset one translator to have most of the information or as much information as, as is going to be carried down for the rest of these translators, and then you hit control the other way down. Now, on these knobs, I don't think it's possible for my fingers to spin those knobs fast enough to cause a delay in the system so I'm going to go ahead and set those to the same variable just because I don't think it's necessary to set them to independent variables but in general independent variables means things are faster so I do have to have a way to turn on my LEDs though on my nano control otherwise I won't be able to see my faders so make a preset and then your incoming trigger is preset change, current preset is activated, your outgoing is going to be your buttons set to velocity 127, and they should be set to notes in Korg, if not I would change them to notes, otherwise you're going to have to translate every single uh, note. But yeah, what I did was hit control D about 38 times, and then copy or uh, made sure that each one was being sent to a specific note that I wanted to turn on. Um, I turned on that preset manually because it's set to activation, but I will need a button to turn it on. So what I'm going to do is create a preset called LED button. And I like that cycle button to turn on my lights because it flashes when I first plug it in. So that's my incoming trigger set outgoing action to activate LED set. And then after I do that, then I have to have a way to turn my LED set off so that it can be turned on again if I plug it in or if I if it starts with it activated. The reason I do that is if I ever want to change the button that triggers that, it's much easier than having to go through all 38 or so of my presets and change that button. But what I'm going to do with this button is kind of use it as a simple version. This tutorial goes two ways. If you want to make this more complicated and have an online button and to make sure that your bone box is running properly at all times, Here's how you do that. Make a preset called on, make a preset called bounce. Follow me on this because it gets a little bit confusing. On your preset called on, you're going to have your button that was used to turn on the lights. 
that's your incoming trigger. When you get that button in, you're going to, or when Bohm sees that MIDI note in, it's actually going to spit the exact same MIDI note out. Well, it sees a control change, so it's going to have to spit out a control change, but it's going to spit that value out, and that's going to turn on that light permanently. But we want the button to flash to let us know that Bohm is still online. So what we're going to do, and we do have to have this set to swallow too, we're going to duplicate this and then have it send a value of zero to turn the light off and that's going to be delayed by one second. And both of those, their incoming trigger is the MIDI note. Now we're going to duplicate it and make another trigger for if this preset is activated. Our bounce preset is going to listen to on being activated or to it being deactivated. I'm checking right now. I always get confused on how this is built. It's basically just an endless loop that I made in Bohm and it happens to also trigger a light. So when this preset is activated, well, when the on preset is activated, I'm going to deactivate that same preset after one second. So bounce cue is always running. When it sees on go on, its job is to turn it off after one second and then turn it back on after another second. Once it turns it on, it goes back to its first translator and hears that on was turned on and then goes through its cycle again. So it's triggering itself. And then we had to set the control change triggers so that we can initiate that bounce. So I hit cycle and the loop has begun. It'll continue like that forever as long as Bohm is running and that's how you know that your Bohm box is still in operation and hasn't, uh, hasn't tanked on you. We're about to disconnect our MIDI device from Granime but let's give it a quick test. Add some MIDI remotes and just make sure we didn't do something incorrect. I'm pretty sure we got everything right. Set those to exact. Fader. I'm sure you guys know how this part is done, but I had to show it just in case you don't. So let's store some execs and test this out. And you do have to set your MIDI input device if you're using an on PC. We could set the MIDI output device to Bohm as well, just because if we want to send a MIDI note ourselves to the nano control and tell it to turn a light off for some reason we can do that but yep flashed all my channels look like everything works so let's upload it to the bone box unplug your nano control from your computer and plug it into your bone box now my bone box looks a little bit weird now 
because I have attached a power over Ethernet injector. It's meant to take internet signal or whatever signal and inject power over Ethernet into it. But I'm just using it to power this device because it gives it more power and it's more reliable connection than micro USB. So um, let's make sure that our bone box is powered and we are connected wirelessly to it. And then dial into 192.168.1531 and enter your password, which should be your number on the back of the bone box. Go to your MIDI routes and whatever, however many routes you have, delete them all and make it look kind of like this. Um, if you're using a different device, then obviously it won't say nano control, but note that you do have to have that device plugged into the bone box for it to see your um, MIDI device. And then go to MIDI translator and make sure that you have uploaded your MIDI translator project file. After doing that, and you can verify that your MIDI translator project is on the bone box. I should have seen my uh, nano control start blinking at this point. So it looks like something kind of strange happened. Actually it was blinking, but it has since stopped. So this happens sometimes. I'm going to try to save my route set. And it went right back to previous settings. It does this sometimes, just keep fighting it. Either load a route set or just reset your bone box. Um, just do stuff and it'll eventually figure itself out. But once you get it set, it's pretty sturdy. Oh, that's not what I wanted at all. Delete these. Just rebuild it again. Okay, it has saved this time. My light's blinking. My translator file's working. Running completely off my bone box. So as long as I'm outputting to my bone box DIN, I should be fine to take it to my grandma too. If you want to test your MIDI output before you get to the GrandMA, you can do so on any MIDI device you have that has a DIN MIDI port just by running a cable from the MIDI out on the bone box to the MIDI in on that device. What's up guys? I'm here at Chris Litt's shop, Lit Lighting. What I got here is Korg Nano Control plus a bone box plus a Grandma 2. And I already configured everything so it should just pop into place. got that chirping so that's executing Bohm's program the remote inputs let's just go remote inputs so on the GrandMA 2 console there are no MIDI inputs to specify because there's only one MIDI input so just go to your MIDI remotes I do this add 16 you do have to use the mouse ball 
and go don't right click left click oh that's a middle click left click to select all right click zero through through and note that you only want to take this first bank to note seven before they become other uh, other notes. Okay. Type. You can go from the bottom up now. Exec. And then exec. You just hit one. And it will try all the way down. And then be sure you select all of these and make them buttons or faders, I'm sorry. And then X and you should have them mapped. Yep. And if you were wondering if the bone box and nano control fit in those grand and made drawers. I think it will. What? Oh, you can't get to that USB though. Yeah, it fits. That fits. Sweet. Now what about the bone box though? No, the bone box won't have it. Yeah, you're putting your things inside my console. Yeah, I'm putting my thing in your thing. What are you, you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, things that make you go. Uh, things that make you go. Uh, I think they would fit in here. I think the bone box? I think it would fit in here. I think. Oh, sh will. I Moment of like truth. Oh! It does, like, perfectly. Dude, it's like it's meant for it. It's sick. Then you have room for your cables. That's very dope. But then you don't have room for your brushes and your wipes. Well, why do you need notepad. a pad? You're never going to paint your Grand Ame. No. You're never going to Sharpie your Grand Ame. But yeah, if you, you need are. to just, like, you need to, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, then that could, um. Like, just fit up your. Have you seen this desk, though? It's pretty cool, right? And pre-mates. You pre-mates ones, too. <laughs> that about wraps it up. Hopefully, this gets you to where you need to be in your show file and setup. If not, and you can use some more explanation, please let me know in the comments or message me direct, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Huge thank you to Cody Lyle and Lit Lighting for letting me use their shop and Grandma 2 to test this. And if you want to see more videos just like this, well, not just like this, but in this category of MIDI and lighting and accessories, subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see when I post my next video. Until then, have safe gigs, and I will hopefully see some of you around. Later.